in the years during the First World War, this art movement called Dada began, and one of the Dada. most Dada, okay. yeah. And how do, you spe- how do you spell that's it? That's D-A-D-A. It was really a nonsense word, and that's why it was called that. And the idea was to create a kind of anti-art, to kind of challenge what art was. You know, the world was in flames. The war was raging across Europe, and artists didn't want to have any part of it. They right. wanted to show how absurd and how dangerous the world had gotten. And one of the artists who was a Dada artist, whose name was Marcel Duchamp, began to create what we call ready-mades, or what he called ready-mades. Mm-hmm. Some of them were assisted ready-mades, where he would take two objects that existed in the world and put them together. And some objects were just pure ready-mades. And one of my favorite is called In Advance of a Broken Arm in advance of a broken arm. And we're looking at it on the left here. Uh, and, and you had to explicitly tell me that it was the one on the <laughs> yeah, left. Yes, I did. And so just so just to make this clear, this is in advance of a broken arm. That's exactly right. And, and you had to point that out because we have a very similar piece on the right-hand side right over here, which I just got off of Amazon, which is a, a snow shovel. And really, they're not much different at all, are they? No, they both seem like snow shovels. They are both snow shovels, except that Duchamp has taken his snow shovel out of the garage or yes. out of the hardware store Yes. Um, and relocated it, sort of reframed it, and said, no, this is a ready-made. This is something to look at and to understand within an aesthetic sphere. I'm thinking what I think many people are thinking. OK, he did that. And I mean, it seems like what he did was a very cynical act which was like, here's art for you, all you jokers. I'm going to go buy a snow shovel and stick it in a museum. And I, I don't know, I feel like he's like laughing at people. I think that there is definitely cynicism here. Mm-hmm. And I think that this is very much related to the objectives of Dada, which mm-hmm. was to undermine the way in which we valued art, the way in which we understood art, saying that the world had become a kind of place of chaos and a kind of dangerous chaos and the artist wanted to in some ways have nothing to do with that any longer so how can I most undermine in a sense destroy the way in which we had defined art to create a kind of anti-art I think that's exactly right and was was he like the first person because you know actually you know we we just talked about Warhol and we said oh you know now someone took a like a piece of advertising stuck it in a museum would feel very derivative but Warhol did that a while after Duchamp So to some degree, it feels like now Warhol was derivative because Duchamp went full, you know, Warhol actually had to do some work. He actually like actually painted a soup can. But this guy, I mean, he he's I mean, he's way ahead of his time. He he literally just bought a snow shovel and showed up. Duchamp would say, however, Mm -hmm. that finding a perfect ready made wasn't an easy thing. He went on a hunt. And that most objects did not suit his definition of what a a perfect ready-made would be. You know, he is creating a kind of narrative here. I mean, what do you think of when you when you put that snow shovel together with the title? It it it, to me it looks like a um, a parody. It I mean you know in advance of a broken arm. Yeah, it, it, he went and bought a snow shovel, and, and, and he called it In Advance of a Broken Arm, which is a very kind of fancy-sounding title, which, you know, makes you think a little bit. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I... I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so I think you're absolutely right. I think it's yeah. sort of impossible. And here's the even more absurd part. We're looking at a photograph, not of the original In Advance of the Broken Arm, but actually of a later snow shovel that he replaced the original with after the first had been lost, perhaps, to a snowstorm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We read, we read August 1964, fourth version after lost original of November 1915. So it, I guess... Well, can you even have an original? Can you? Can well, exactly, because there's probably a hundred of those originals. So let's play this out for yeah. a moment. Imagine that this came up to auction, and it went to Sotheby's, it went yes. to Christie's, it went to yeah. one of the big auction houses, yeah. and it's a Duchamp. It's a, this important example yes. of Dada, and so the auction is going to start at some very high number, yes. right? You know, it's going to start at two million dollars. Yeah. But then somebody, but is it's, that really what this might go for? Uh, these are priceless objects, yes. except that yeah. somebody could walk. Walk in to yes. the Home Depot or go onto Amazon yeah. as, as we just Or did. their grandfather's barn or something. That's right. You know, imagine they could get past the guards at Christie's and walk into the showroom with their own snow shovel. And there would be no difference physically between the snow shovel that's up on the podium that's for sale, that's for auction, and that's reaching these astronomical figures versus the snow shovel that's worth, you know, twenty nine ninety nine. So that's a fascinating question because they're exactly, they're exa- physically identical snow shovels. 
and one was touched by Duchamp and placed in a museum, and another thousand were not. And because of that, this one is this one could go for millions. So you started off by saying, is Duchamp being cynical? And I think in some ways he really is. He's trying to make, in a sense, the apparatus of the art market transparent. He's trying to force us to grapple with how we define what art is and how it's important. And maybe that our values are really misplaced in some way. But he's also pointing to something else, which is that art is not necessarily in the 20th century located in the practice of its making, located in the proficiency of the artist and their brushwork, but it's located in the sort of symbolic language that art can evoke, in the way that art can transform the way that we see the world. So I, I'm actually becoming a bit of a fan of Duchamp, but I, I, I think there's, I, I, and, and I'm also thinking of becoming an avant-garde artist. <laughs> so what is, you know, in the same, like I want to do, I want to do an art installation called Breath of Air, which is I will go to that location, that little part of volume of the music, and I'll just exhale right there. And and we'll just put like a little placard that someone had exhaled at this point. And it was, that would push thinking in art, where the art object does not even exist. You know what? It's there, been dispersed through the museum. You, you, you've missed your moment because art was made like that in the 70s and oh, 80s. Oh, I missed that. Someone's missed already done already. that. Someone's literally created art that does not exist. Or art that exists as a kind of performative act. Oh, yeah, yeah. But... Yeah, this this one's a difficult one. I'm, um, I mean, yeah. <laughs> this is about as tough as it gets. Yeah, I mean, what's your what's your take on it? I'll I'll push. I mean, in advance of a broken arm, do you, does what do you make? I, I mean, I I agree actually with everything you said that like he has introduced this. He's challenging people's notions of art, challenging the art market, challenging all of these. But it's done in my mind. It seems like in a very cynical way that I'm going to put a very mundane object on there and make people like bid on it and think of it as art. I mean, what what do you what do you think of this name advance of a broken arm and that it's, you know, gets all this special showcase and the fact that it costs the same as a, you know, a a, a $5 snow shovel you can get at Home Depot. You know, when we think about poetry, for for example, we 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 don't worry about the cost of the typeface. We we think about where that poetry brings us emotionally and intellectually. It transforms us, it changes us. And so it's interesting that in the visual arts, we are still so tied to the handicraft. Duchamp is really distancing art from the handicraft and making it a purely conceptual process. And so he's really sort of forcing that issue in, I think, an important way that has really challenged the 20th century and made contemporary art possible. So I definitely so I, that's interesting. So what you're saying is is that he's really like like poetry. Poetry is really the idea of the poetry. Someone can copy and paste that. Po we can all share that poetry. There's no physical words there, and and he kind of did the same. This idea, and that's why he was able to take another shovel and do it again and again and again. But it's still, I mean, we say that, but at the same time, the art market does not necessarily view it that way. They view this shovel as being somehow holy versus the other shovel that was made on the same assembly line is not nowhere near as holy. I think that's exactly right. And in some ways, Duchamp failed. In some ways, I think the avarice of the art market has prevailed despite his attempt to undermine it. You know, we still would auction this at a very high price, and we would still differentiate the two shovels, and we would still value one over the other. In a sense, we heroicize the object that is somehow connected to the conceptual, even though I think Duchamp, in some ways, was really focused on, you know, separating those things. And what about, I mean, just going back to the name, I mean, I, I, I can kind of buy some of this in, in that he's really challenging what is art and it's the idea of putting focus on something like this. But at the same time, it seems like his the title is a little bit uppity. As verse, I mean, why didn't he just call it snow shovel? Like, why can't something just call it snow? Or why didn't he just call it blank? Or, I mean, why did he have to say in advance of a broken arm? I'm, I'm not going to pretend to know exactly what his motivations were, yeah. but I think that the cynicism that you spoke of before is exactly his point here. He's almost creating a narrative. I mean, some of my students have said they could imagine that somebody slipped on the ice and broke their arm, and yeah. that there really is this sort oh, of. Oh, I could imagine. Ima you know, I could. We could call this piece in advance of a cherry pie. Yeah. I absolutely. mean, you know, I can imagine <laughs> that after working a long day shoveling snow, I will go eat a cherry pie. Uh, yes, I mean, right. it would be a fun thing to name this piece of art. And, and I think that notion of absurdity was yeah. really central to, to Duchamp's practice and what, what he was interested in. And I think he wanted us to sort of bump up against the absurdity of that title and to be challenged by it. Fascinating. Mm -hmm.